Hello, my fellow adventurers! This is Malucha, and welcome back to the New World. Guys, it's been a while, and the main reason is that, well, the new update, the new season got a couple delays. And the main, main reason behind it is they wanted to overhaul their movement and combat system. They were still working on an old system, and it was kind of hard to adjust that system to certain situations, as far as I understood it. So bringing in a completely new system would make it easier to later on make adjustments if something was going wrong, right? And with this new well, combat and movement system, they also wanted to implement something else, and that is controller use. So those are the main issues, I do believe, why this uh, season was so drawn back and why it updated so late. Now, I'm honestly... By the time you look at this video, video or this video will release at least, uh, I'm seven days late as well. Like, I kind of was out of the loop uh, a little bit as I was investing time in other games. I wasn't really paying attention to when the update actually released. And all of a sudden Steam said, like, New World has an update. So I was like, holy crap, I need to check it out. So that's exactly what we're going to do today, guys. We are going to check out everything that will at least the most visual parts of like okay this is really obvious and really noticeable it changes in the game and one of the first changes guys is a seasonal trial that we are gonna get now so the winter rune forge recommended 650 to 700 descendant the ancient rune forge and claim victory over its guardian so basically it's a rune forge that we did solo and it was like with um we had to hit snowballs against uh, specific targets and then there was a flame that popped up and the flame gave us immunity. Like it was, there was some really nice mechanics in there and they basically made it into a 10-man raid. So really, really cool. Uh, definitely gonna enter it and see, check out later on uh, if we can actually make a run through it. But we also see here that one is, there got, there's gonna be eight new artifacts in the game. Three weapons and six armors in total. And one of them is the Tempest Fury that we can actually get here in the Winter Room Forge. So yeah, definitely interesting. Definitely something we are going to look at. And while we are talking about the actual Tempest Fury, the art artifact, that is of course also the, one of the first segments that we are going to take a look at is all of the artifacts that got implemented into the game. So with this season are eight new artifacts where three are weapons and one of them is Sin a Hatchet. So we got Magnify Corruption debuffs last 25% longer, works on both weapons. Defile 2% more damage per buff on a target, Kinley Jacket and Refreshing Move with one random perk. We already saw Tempest Fury. So we got momentum successfully attacks, gain 3% movement speed for 3 seconds, works on both weapons. So yeah, 30% movement speed on successful attacks. Plus whirlwind no longer needs to hit targets to continue to spin. And it can spin up to 12 times. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting my hands on this one. Just to see, it's gonna be spin to win guys. Like it's just gonna be spin. You no longer need to hit enemies to keep on spinning. And you can spin for 12 times. That is That has to look... Freaking incredible. We got Refreshing Moor and Fortifying Whirlwind. So yeah, Whirlwind, Whirlwind, Whirlwind. Like, uh, it's basically make sure that you can keep on spinning, right? And then the third weapon is Venom. Poison tipped heavy melee attacks with either weapon cause poison damage, uh, dealing 20% weapon damage for 5 seconds. It attach a gem to add its effect, transient crits and transient strike. So actually pretty good. Now the poison tip actually works on either weapon. So... If you have venom attack uh venom equipped and you're using a bow those poison uh damages will also work on your bow on your great axe on any other weapon that you're using while using this one guys so yeah those are the three new weapons that get added into this season can't wait to actually get my hands on them and then see which quests we need to do so the first armor piece that we see is a medium chest wear Magnify nature's blessing and power expires 200% faster, but you deal 20% more damage. So basically it means that empower always vanishes the second you get it, but you always deal 20% more damage. So it's kind of like you can get a really high empower if you basically do a lot of different uh, skills and perk uh, activations in one succession. Like you can easily get, well not easily, but you can get to like 50% empower. 
but those fade away so the uptime of that empower might not be as good as having like 20 percent increased damage flat always like that is what this armor piece is and it's a medium chestware guys so you can work it into a medium loadout you can work it into a light loadout so definitely an interesting armor piece to look at We've got empty socket, we've got refreshing and enchanted wards so for four damage from light and heavy attacks. So actually pretty nice piece of gear. The next piece of gear are heavy glove artifacts, the ghillie gravity gauntlets. We got magnify with charged. Whenever you take damage, you gain an empowered charge that increases the damage of your next attack by 3%. Max tends charge. So basically you can get 30% increase on your next damage. So if you can... Whenever you take damage, so for a tank, of course, it has health on it. It has enchanted ward on it. So actually a pretty good piece of gear. And basically it means like if you're tanking and you're taking damage, eventually you're going to be doing 30% more damage than you baseline do just from tanking, just from taking damage. So I see a lot of people working this into some, well, maybe into some tank sets, but you need to go full heavy with this one. Uh, definitely to actually make it work and the next artifact is the iron heart heavy leg wear it has a steady foundation when not in heavy loadout you gain 20 percent more max health attach a gem to add its effect a refreshing and enchanted ward so steady foundation when not in heavy loadout so it's a heavy leg wear you want to use while running medium loadout or light it's got you you cannot wear heavy pants with a light loadout so it will only work with a medium loadout medium set basically so grabbing one light one i have no idea how the setup is for heavy leg wear with uh with uh medium gear to actually stay in the medium range but 20 percent more max health is a lot of health guys that is a lot of health that you can actually get. Definitely want to see out like what is the difference. And then if you go for 300 constitution and then get the 20% more max health, like that should be like incredible. I think like 22, 25k HP and then 20% more. That is that is definitely a really, really nice one. And refreshing in the channel war. Definitely nice ones. We got an empty socket here and a random perk, of course. So yeah, actually pretty cool, pretty cool. And then the last piece of armor that we actually have is the Creed Boots a Light a Footwear Ambush. Deals 15% more damage and 25% critical chance as long as you haven't hit the target within 20 seconds. So for whatever I can see from this one, a Refreshing and Freedom, so it's kind of a PvP one. Uh, it's gonna be working at those like insta insta kill shots, like those one kill shots. So definitely an interesting one if you were going for a musket or bow build. Like, you just need to wait till an enemy is, like, pretty low on HP. Like, let's say he's at 50% HP. You're gonna get 50% increased damage and a 25% critical strike chance. As long as you haven't hit the target within 20 seconds. So if he's 50% HP and you can get, like, that last shot off, you're gonna do a lot more damage. And the higher, way higher chance to actually do a critical damage on him. And then the second item we can get from the season pass is the Phoenix Amulet. So it's the only jewelry in here, guys. It has Magnify and then Phoenix Vengeance. There were a lot of ups and downs on this uh, artifact. Because on the PTR, a lot of people were saying, like, it's broken. It needs to be fixed. I think they changed it, like, three times in total. And they're not even sure if they want to keep this uh, this setup. So what does it do? When you receive lethal damage, you avoid death and regain 100% of your max health. So basically, the second somebody kills you, you get uh, your complete health back. Like you do, don't die and you get your complete health back. But you become infected with, uh, inflicted with vengeance. Reduces your healing by 200%. So basically, you cannot even heal anymore. Like maybe a sliver. And then you take damage equal to 20% of your max health every second until you die or get a kill. Now, or get a kill is an interesting one. Because in PvP, does it mean that you actually need to get the last hit on somebody or an assist on somebody? Like, if it's an assist, then it's still kind of really broken because it's pretty easy to get the assists. If it's you get a kill yourself, then it's definitely 
hard to actually avoid that death. If it's for 3 versus 3, I'm seeing a more use in this thing. If it's for like OPR and wars, I don't really see a use for this. Because you're, you're doing way more AoE damage and way more assists than in a 1 versus 1 situation or a 3 versus 3 situation, right? 1 versus 1, I see this, see this being useful. But if the player knows that you're taking massive damage and he's not doing anything, so he knows that you have Phoenix equipped, the only thing he needs to do is run away and you die from yourself because you cannot get the kill. See, so in that situation, it's not going to be useful either. And it has a 33 minutes cooldown. So yeah, definitely it's useful, but three minutes is pretty long. But then if you can survive it, like it's not long enough. Like you see where I'm going this, right? There is a lot of uh, talk about is this actually good? Is this not good? Is it useful? Is it? Is it interesting, right? We got an empty socket purifying. When you're hit below 50%, you lose all debuffs. And we got stamina recovery. So two of the perks that a lot of players actually are looking for on, on the amulets. So that it's definitely a PvP perk, guys. Like, it is it is a, a PvP and, uh, amulet. And those were all of the jewelry that we actually get into the new season. Now, if you're wondering where can we actually find this new trial, the Winter Rune Forge seasonal trial, it is between Eden Grove and Great Cleave here next to the Gnostic Crux Shrine and the Crescent Window Shrine. So right in between, guys, here on this side path. So that is where you can find the Winter Rune Forge if you're interested in running it. And while we are talking about Magnify, Magnify also got a major overhaul. Well, not maybe a major overhaul. It became a little bit more useful, guys, and a little bit easier to implement. So basically, earlier, Magnify meant that the higher stat was getting all the buffs from Magnify. Now, there's a lot of armor pieces and a lot of weapons with Magnify on it. So if it wasn't set up, if your armor wasn't set up right, all of your stats could go to Constitution if you wanted to build a little bit of Constitution into your focus build. What did they do? Magnify, well, right now you can actually pick or the highest, where you put in the most points like it was before. Or you can say, I want everything from my Magnify that I actually have, like 69 points for me at least. I want them into Strength. I want them into Intelligence. Or I want them into, for me at least as a healer, into Focus. So you can now speci specifically say, I want all of my Magnify that I have on my gear to be sp sp specifically, holy crap, to be in this slot of stats. So that makes using Magnify a whole lot easier. You're still going to need to work a little bit. Like you still need to like equipment 31 points, uh, assigned 190 points. So you can, you can mix and match a little bit better on where you actually want to have your stats, right? So yeah, Magnify changes looking good. And like I said before, a lot of the reasons why this game, uh, well, this update had so many drawbacks and so many changes on the PTR and actually, well, a setback a little bit on when they wanted to release it. Well, mainly is because they did an overhaul on the combat and animation system, guys. They were working with an old system, which was pretty, well not useful to change and they basically made a complete overhaul on it making it easier to later on make changes in their combat system in their movement system and while they were doing it they were also adjusting it for if we check out the game menu right now and we would go to where the hell are my settings over here controller guys so yeah controller is now in the game you can actually play the game now on controller so you can play from your couch on your tv if you want to you can see here complete list of how you can set it up defaults and then the melees all as well so yeah i think you do can change them if you want to not really sure if you can change them or not but yeah pretty nice people who love playing controllers can now play on controllers and we also got a change into, well, our kitchen is only level 4 here, so not really sure if I can change it. We got an overhaul on our food, guys, on the cooking in the game. So every food type that had two buffs on it, so for instance, if I would, I think Roasted Rabbit would have, uh, I don't know, was it Banana Farfait? It was one. Stuffed Calamari? It's no, that was Flat Constitution. There, was, there were multiple food sources, guys, that had two stats on them. They had, like, strength and constitution, focus and constitution, dexterity and constitution, like, intellect and dexterity. All those food sources are gone. 
like there are only food sources with one stat one flat stat on it and you see roasted rabbit here 48 stats banana farfet 44 stats cremella 40 stats you got 30 stats and then 10 stats so those are the only ones so making food now you can see 15 50 150 205 and 250 so it is a whole lot easier to actually make food plus the recipes kind of changed as well basically before this you needed like five fish to make three feasts or three three effects now you basically only need three so the recipes became cheaper and they became more stable so if you want dexterity food you'll only fight dexterity it's not going to be dexterity and intellect it's not going to be dexterity and constitution it's going to be flat dexterity making the entire food and cooking process a whole lot easier if you ask me and of course a new season also means a new season pass guys we see some armor matrixes with weapon matrixes here in the elite track so there are a bunch of paintings in here uh guardian hero we see scorcher den so this is the last page if we go to level uh what was it 90 yeah some armors in here got some hats some colors like the usual stuff that you can find in a season pass of any game but the level 80 on the free track and this one is an important one level 80 the free track is the phoenix artifact amulet guys so this is where you can get that phoenix artifact amulet and then if we go down all the way down 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 level 20 on the free track again really really nice they're not like they're not paid to win artifacts they are basically for everybody who can work their way up to level 20 the greed boots so the greed boots and then the phoenix amulet are in the free track on 20 and on 80 so this is where you can actually get them and how high you need to go usually the artifacts i do believe are like level 90 ish or even higher uh from previous seasons if i remember correctly so being on 80 is actually definitely not bad like i, I presume everybody can get 80 at least and uh yeah some columns some uh bear skull attachment skin oh there's some skins for your minds real nice so yeah the usual stuff so we got some uh schematics in here they're looking pretty cool mining pick so definitely definitely gonna pick up i should have enough well uh buy premium 36 really nice so yeah let's buy the premium there we go and let's pick up the first one what is the first one that we're gonna get great sword skin okay nice pretty cool for all you coin hungry guys in this game and i'm not one of them because my coin count is constantly at the bottom the coin cap is increased from 500,000 to 1 million so you can now become a millionaire in new world if you want to work your way towards it i'll probably never get there also introduced with this update guys with this new season is the rest of the continuation well, the rework of the main story quest line. So we did have like the previous two seasons or at least a couple seasons ago. We got some reworks on the main uh, storyline, which are incredible, guys. Uh, like I kind of have a, like, a video idea that I kind of want to start working on uh, soon. But it's going to take a while before I can actually release it. But here we see like main story quest from Ashes of the Seer done. So we are getting a continuation of the complete rework that they're gonna do over the main storyline so more cinematics in there more uh story in there so definitely something interesting to look at for myself and if we go over the map guys we can see that with the new patch and this is kind of something i didn't really see in the patch notes or i basically scrolled over it that might be possible as well that well all the symbols kind of became a little bit clearer uh we can see here now trial of the devourer we're gonna see the hatchery and then here the uh crescent next to the crescent we can see the winter room fjord so the 10 man uh instances that uh, basically the raids of new world now have uh, like visual icons on where they are actually at and then if we go a little bit closer we can actually see like okay the mines here nox eternia actually got a little bit of a, an indicator as well like a little symbol on top of it this is an elite stronghold again here with Murgard, Elite Stronghold, like the three sections of Murgard, Elite Stronghold. Down below, Upper Sviken, an Elite Stronghold. So yeah, we got some new icons in the game. I feel like the uh, symbols for the, the expeditions changed as well a little bit. 
like they're more flashy and especially if we go to like activities and we go to mutated ones you can see like this symbol i think it got a change i i don't remember that it was like this in the previous sim in previous uh in previous season so yeah definitely some nice reworks there to be able to quickly see on your map like where is every everything right oh yeah there's the the trials are over here and okay we got a dungeon over here we got a dungeon over here so it's a little bit easier to see where they are located at so definitely really really nice and with the rework of the movement we've got some new uh, movement skills as well so yeah basically running backwards is always running backwards if we push forward we go forward if we run backwards we go backwards even if we switch up the camera you're still running backwards now if we go to settings and I basically just figured this out, guys. So we go to gameplay. We basically now have free form movement. So if we turn this one on and we run backwards, we run forwards. If we run forwards, we can run backwards and actually have free moving camera running around us. So I can turn to the left. And while turning to the left, I can turn to the right. Like we can completely now free look around our character. So I can run towards you guys while i couldn't do this before and this is actually pretty cool so this is gonna make it like if you're in combat with uh it's it's kind of getting used to but if you're like in combat and you have like people running behind you it's really easy to run away and just like okay i'm gonna need to run this direction shit they're behind me they're behind me okay let's uh go to the right are they still behind me yeah they're still behind me and previously you started walking like backwards right and running backwards is slower than running forwards. Like, I can even roll out this little touch roll. So, for combat, this is definitely way more interesting to have the free look perspective around you guys. So, yeah, game menu, menu settings, and then free form movement set. And for everybody who bought the DLC Rise of the Angry Earth and actually has their hands on some mounts, we can now... Use mounts in OPR, guys. So getting to those forts, getting those back gaps is now going to be so much faster. Like, you are going to need, need to be careful. Because if you do not cap in time, there might be an entire platoon now running behind me to get to this place. So, yeah, definitely interesting. Mounts are now in OPR. And there are some other changes to OPR. There were a lot of complaints that doors were way too strong. So they're basically now weapons with siege powers behind it, like doing more damage to structures. Now have like 30% increase and there are, well, basically it, uh, the repair is a little bit slower. So doors should now be less, uh, they should be now more squishy and less tanky uh, is basically what I want to say. So for everybody who's complaining that, well, PvE building in game in a PvP uh, environment is something that sucks, well, OPR... Basically has building in the game, guys. Don't play don't blame the players, blame the game. It's as simple as that. The game has building structures in it, and people like me love to build. So yeah, if I can hold the door up and you cannot enter, you cannot cap. It's as simple as that. And for PvP, the rank requirements uh, have changed as well, guys. So uh, recruit is now rank nine zero to nine. We got steel 10 to 19, bronze at 20. Silver at 50, gold at 100, platinum at 150, and star medal remains at rank 200. With each tier reward having a new minimal gear score for equipment, starting with 650 for recruits. Now, I opened my page here, and basically, 700, 700. Does this mean that once you reach level 200 track, that you're only gonna see level 700 gear score? Because then it would be like, okay, this is good. Because I worked my ass off to get the 200. And now I'm finally seeing like only level two, level 700 uh, gear score items. That would be incredible. Because that would mean that every item in this, in this pack here, if it's named or not, can be useful. Again here, vicious, putrefying screen and keenly empowered. Actually, not too bad of a perk combination, but before this, I would have said like, okay, it's 650, 630, 680. It's not a named one. We can't upgrade it. So it cannot never reach its full potential. Now it's 700 and it is at its full potential. So there might be actually 
items in here, random items that might actually be useful now. And that is actually pretty cool as well. And the price is actually pretty okay. So yeah, definitely worth it to check out if these changes actually apply or if I'm just lucky seeing like the first first track that I actually do after the, after the uh, the update that they're both like 700. I might just be really, really lucky. We'll have to see later on if this is actually the case. And there we go, guys. Those were the biggest changes for Season of the Guardian. Now, again, Spotlight, Winter Rune Forge, new artifacts, Mountain Night Post Rush, some journey tasks, and new food challenges will all require Rise of the Angry Earth to experience. New seasonal trial, new artifacts like I talked about it. Uh, like I show you, upgrade to combat animation system, outpost rush, cavalry we got here, main story quest line, native controller support we have right now in the game. We see a new season pass, cooking and other trade skill changes in the game. So if you want to look at the actual patchworks and like every little change that came with this game, I would suggest that you like pause this video or actually go to www.newworld.com. And then actually look at the release of Season of the Guardian patch notes. There you can see everything. So we got general world experience. General uh, tier of Azot staff should satisfy the Azot staff requirements anywhere in the world where the staff is required. This should help address cases where some players were not able to acquire the appropriate tier for various scenarios. So apparently somewhere in the game you would have the lower tier Azalt staff where you need a higher tier one and you couldn't unlock the higher tier one because it was behind the main progression line which you could not get yet something like that right so a bunch of quest faction quests here we got some ai fixes we got expedition fixes in here glacial tarn tempest heart uh global mutators outpost rush implementations we got arena remove the center water fountain from the gladi gladiator team three versus three arena map in order to enhance slight sight lines and improve overall match fairness we got combat changes in here equip loadout changes we got musket traps ice got ice spikes notable fixes upgrades to combat and animation system changes based on the ptr like uh, it's a whole freaking list guys perk changes that we can see in here artifact changes that we can see in here attributes weapons so yeah fixed an issue where the 350 strength attribute bonus was not applying to ranged ability damage uh, weapons fixes and changes most likely mount changes economy and progression in gear like there is so much to go over and this is like uh tier 5 text food like it's 40 minutes because cooking like this is what i mean like it's all flat stats now uh earlier in the game trade skill level requirements so requirements for some of the cooking levels went down like there's a lot of changes crafting gathering refining progression uh, pvp reward track like what i just talked about and then we got gear and items magnified changes we got loot changes transmog fixes season changes ui and ux changes and social changes so yeah if you really want to look through all of these patch notes as i'm gonna well as i did a little earlier then uh, you can find it at the www.neworld.com website guys but for now, as the sun is setting, I am also going to end up this episode. I wanted to make it as short as possible. Uh, I do have to say, and like at the end of this video, I did realize that the player count for New World is at an at absolute lowest. And I kind of find it sad, like this game has a lot to offer. It might have not been the... Well, best game out there, like, on when it came to fixes and, and stuff that was bugged in the game. But honestly, if you look at the general, like, line of where games are at recently, there hasn't been any game that came out of, like, in the last 15 years, there hasn't been any game, especially, like, the live service games, guys, that has been, like, okay, I'm here, I'm okay, I have nothing wrong with me. Like, not one of the live service games, guys. There's always something to patch. There's always something to fix. It's just, that's life. That's life. We, we are not, we're not in an era where we buy a disc anymore, put it in our PlayStation or a Nintendo or whatever, and just play the entire game without any bugs. Like, every game that releases is a live service game. That's, that's how, that's how the cash, cash cow uh, works. The cash, the cash flow works. I, I, I'm basically rambling on a little bit, guys. Um, I'm just gonna still play. Uh, I'm gonna still play New Worlds. I still love it as an uh, as an MMO, 
uh, I still see a lot of potential. Like, there's, there's so much more dungeons that we can get. So much more raids that we can get. Uh, we can easily get, like, more different mounts. Give us a crocodile. Give us a turtle. Give us an elephant. Like, give us the craziest mounts that you can think of. No, maybe not flying mounts. Because flying in this game would be a weird change. Honestly, but... Uh, give us, give us, give us some funky shit that we can get. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep recording this. Now, usually at this part of the video, I say, and this is where I'm going to end up this episode. And I'm going to sit my ass down. But there's something wrong, guys. Like, usually I go down with my character and I can basically <laughs> look at you. But there's something wrong where I sit and my camera is not following. Is it the... Wait, 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 wait. Let's, uh, let's, let's... Uh, settings? I want to do this right. Uh, camera direction, melee attacks off, off. Maybe is it this? No, it's not. It's not this. So, yeah, I guess uh, my episodes are going to be full. Well, and here I'm going to keep standing and ending <laughs> this episode up here. Uh, I can't do my outro like I wanted to anymore. That that kind of sucks. I definitely need to, need to find a fix for this. But yeah, I'm going to wrap up this episode here, guys. If you want to see more of my Let's Play or my quest progression, or any content that I make of New World, or any other game that I might play on my channel, guys, just hit that subscribe button, it would always help out a lot. I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.